what's going on two days of grapefruits only and I found organic grapefruits at Superstore and they're quite good and it feels easy I'm not feeling really that hungry in general I'm not even eating like 12 grapefruits a day I think I ate maybe five yesterday and I don't know if the point of the grapefruit thing is to eat more grapefruits because the grapefruits help to burn off fat and cellulite. I did it years ago, probably like eight years ago, and I was really thin and it did get rid of that last bit of cellulite for sure. But I was just doing it to cleanse. And I think it's kind of helping because my eyes feel less tired today. Last night I felt kind of emotional about being back where I'm staying and just it's not really energetically right for me and I was sort of feeling kind of blah and laying on the couch watching something and then at a certain point I just started crying but I think a lot of this is the self trying to make itself important for continuity so whatever it'll it'll burn itself out at some point when it's meant to so I'm going to do grapefruits until tomorrow at 2 because I started Monday around 2. And then I'm probably going to try switching to fruit. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not, but whatever, it works. And usually when things are meant to happen, it's effortless. So the grapefruit thing is effortless, whereas if I would have done it, at any other period of time it would have felt like I was pushing myself to do it and so the effortlessness is good and I will have grapefruit until tomorrow at 2 and then I bought some organic apples so maybe I'll switch to apples and then go on from there I wouldn't mind doing a grape cleanse because I bought that book, The Grape Cure. But sometimes grapes make me feel a little bit funny. Like I eat too many and they give me sort of a cramp in my shoulder. So maybe that's good. Maybe they're cleansing. But we'll see. Maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do a couple weeks on grapes. I think bringing the focus back to cleansing my body is good and I've done two infrared saunas and last night I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get to sleep because I tried to get to sleep or go to bed around 10 30 because I had to be up at 7 and I haven't woken up at 7 I don't know when the last time I woke up at 7 was but even though that day I had woken up at 1 so I go to bed around 10 or 10 30 it hasn't even been 12 hours I thought oh my gosh I'm gonna be laying here not able to sleep but I took all my sleep vitamins and I took my meds and I fell asleep so I think partly it's the dark room that helps so I need to focus on the positives of where I'm staying like I have my totally dark room I find it very cold it's really cold and um, yeah, so the things I need to focus on right now because my brain is really slow is getting my car fixed. The air conditioning doesn't work, the windshield is cracked, and the Apple CarPlay is not working very well. And I have a counseling appointment tomorrow, and I need to write something for where I was staying, but my brain's not working the greatest. And then I also, I work Friday and then I'm supposed to go to family constellation meetup on Saturday. And I kind of like that, but I do think I need to take public transit because parking is so expensive. Last time I paid $25 to park, but it was an event weekend, so I don't know how to find out. Because another time I paid, it was like $7, which is reasonable. So, we'll see. Gotta go in for work and, you 
you know I feel I feel better just getting out of the house being outside it's a really beautiful day yeah yeah So I messed up. I was supposed to be at work yesterday and I went today and nobody was there. And so I'm sitting in the park and reading. This morning I took two Sam E as well as four uridine thousand milligrams because the suicidalness is there a little bit. But it's not too bad but I think those things helped. And I also took thousand milligrams of tyrosine and yeah I'm reading Dr. David Hawkins book healing and recovery I think Dr. David Hawkins work is really really good really helpful so I'm reading kind of slow but that's okay and I might try coffee on Sunday because I do need to write something and I feel like my brain's not really working so coffee might give me that energy and I'm feeling like this inner angst is the ego trying to keep itself there like I notice I think it wants attention so it would want to create conflict in order to get attention and then if it does that then it feels like it's not alone so being okay with this aloneness and I made a note in my phone in the calendar about sometimes I make notes in the calendar if it's sort of time sensitive because it was after the crisis time and it says if the crisis wasn't less then maybe being on quetiapine daily is useless but it was less so maybe it's good to be on it daily I don't know so I will continue with that but I wanted to talk to myself about that quickly so then I could erase that note to myself and I think there will be a time where I won't have to take it but that is a ways away yeah look where I am that means I didn't stick to my raw food well I did do almost three days on grapefruit. I was having dinner with my friends last night and I decided to eat. So the last cooked meal I had was Sunday at 10 p.m. So I made it till Wednesday at 6 p.m. So it would have been till 10 p.m. Wednesday. That would have been three days since I'd eaten uh, cooked food or food besides grapefruit. And I did want to go till Thursday at 2, but I just got so hungry around the food that I ate it. Now I'm having stuff so full it's falling apart. And <coughs> spiciness is making me cough. I just feel it's kind of futile right now to try to create any kind of program. And I think that's what I'm struggling with and I think I need to just go with the flow and not try to do anything just do one thing at a time and see what happens so right now I'm at mucho burrito maybe I'll play around with this for the next few months I forget everything I was coming to Mucho Burrito and I accidentally got on the highway and I'm in this area a lot I don't even know where I'm going 
like ever and I got on the highway and then there was traffic the next exit is far away and it was backed up so I did a u-turn in one of those u-turn to go the other side of the highway that you're not supposed to go through but I I was like so annoyed because I would have been stuck in traffic for like an hour and I wanted to eat and this happens because I don't have a sense of direction I don't know where I'm going I don't know who I am I don't know what I am I don't know what's real I don't know what's what the world is I just I don't know anything and it's really challenging to operate that way but it seems like I know what I need to know in the moments that I need to know it so I think I really need to surrender <coughs> I surrender universe please help me be fed and and sleep and be clothed and other than that I don't really know what I need I keep feeling like I need my brain to operate in the way it did before but and I was in the shower today and I did have a bit of like energy and some insight coming in but it was short-lived and that's okay and and I figured out what was wrong with the sauna it was only set to 100 degrees. So I changed the setting and now it gets a lot hotter. And I think it is helping me because after, after I had the sauna, that's when I sort of had insight again in, in the shower a little bit. And um, I had a counseling appointment today. And I think I like this counselor because she was willing to speak my language. For some reason I got into um, talking about like parallel worldy type stuff and talking about how it seems like there's this pocket of reality that I don't exist in and telling her that I sort of had evidence in my phone that there's like and I told her different examples, uh, which isn't the whole story. And she was willing to say, like, so I can't remember what she said, but something about, so in this world, it's blah, blah, blah. And in the other world, you know, values are different or something like that. But she didn't say, like, no, there aren't two different worlds. No, there's no this or that. She was willing to speak that language. So I thought that was cool. And, you know, we talked about other things. We didn't talk that much about that. But just her willingness to speak that way was helpful. Like, it was validating. And it was it was nice, even though maybe she doesn't understand, you know, or maybe she does. Maybe she understands to some ex extent that there are worlds based on different energies. And, you know, I'm feeling like there's an energy that kind of saved me. Perhaps I was worth saving somehow, and hopefully we all are. Hopefully we all have elements in our, within ourselves that are worth saving. So, you know, since then it's been a struggle. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, yeah. Lots to talk about. I'm sure I've, I've talked about all this weird stuff before, but now it feels like my brain has kind of integrated it and come to terms with it. And I think the times that I've dissociated and felt like a homeless person is because I am kind of a homeless person in a way. I'm not saying I'm experiencing homelessness, but I think the, the sensation of feeling homeless is a, an actual experience of detachment. So I go into this space where I'm really scared and I feel like I'm homeless. I think it's fearing the aloneness and one would rather, you know, be dragged or brought back to being in relationship with those one is attached to, to reassume a linear type of reality. That's what everyone else wants. You know, people that are attached to me wouldn't want me to be radically different and <clears throat> you know be on the other side of plant of the planet all of a sudden <coughs> so 
you know, that's where I feel like that other world is sort of competing with the attachment and the conditioning. And even, you know, I've gone up the levels of consciousness. This Each crisis, it happens that way. Like looking at Dr. David Hawkins' scale of consciousness, one goes down to basically zero, like death. <clears throat> And then one transcends the levels, and I've transcended faster this time, but I'm still in a state of a bit of anger and maybe pridefulness. I don't experience it as prideful, but the way he describes it in his book, Healing and Recovery, it is kind of pridefulness. But these are the levels that would want to be attached. You know, those levels are the levels that, of which some of my relationships exist. So you know how I manifest in those relationships where it, which are at that energy level is how I manifest in those relationships so you know one could work to to grow those relationships to a certain level but you know if the others are sort of stuck in a certain level of consciousness it's going to constantly bring one down to that sort of fear lower energy forceful states of consciousness um, you know, and people that don't realize this might get stuck in it and think, well, that's how it is. And I can't change other people, but I can sure change my situation and my circumstances. And that's what I did by going to the island, and it really helped to change the flavor. You know, I had a few days of, like, one event of crisis that sort of trickled into a few days, and my, my brain functioning executive functioning and planning hasn't come back fully <clears throat> but it's mostly there you know even though I can't find my way around in my own town <clears throat> so yeah I think I just need to release the attachment for things to like linear, linearly get better. Like it's okay to, like right now I'm feeling fine. And I was with a friend before, I was feeling kind of slow. And um, it's okay to sort of be bounced around by the situation. And I had this email about this thing and I need to like do this thing to solve this problem. And it's like really annoying. And I feel anger and I feel like that state of anger sort of attracted that scenario, you know, so I can be mad and I can feel like myself, which isn't true. I'm basically alone. Basically, you know, I think I have these attachments that are going to help me or save me or something, but those attachments are the ones that throw me to the wolves of psychiatry, you know, because they don't know what to do to help me. They just want me to be automatically functioning how they think I should be. And that energy doesn't work. Only unconditional love works. This is a strange world. I, when I was coming out of my counseling appointment, there was a guy in a truck sitting there and I know him. He's a, a, an acquaintance friend and he lives in the area and he would just text me and said, uh, what activities do you like to do? And I said, tennis? Because I don't have a tennis buddy. And Craigslist got rid of their personals, so I can't even say, hey, I'm looking for a tennis partner. Um, so he plays tennis. So that's the thing. Like, I didn't know how to find someone to play tennis with, but the universe found someone to play tennis with me. He's probably the only other person I know that lives in Abbotsford that I forgot lived in Abbotsford because I haven't seen him in a long time. So yeah, all of a sudden I got a tennis buddy and then I was talking with my mom by text and I ended up saying some weird stuff about what I've experienced and how I interpret it and stuff. And she didn't really respond too much to it, but it felt more powerful to talk about how I feel about how the world works and how I feel my brain works and how I feel my experience than my feelings as a hurt me. So I was crying a bit, but as I started typing about 
like the truth of my experience from my own subjective experiential point of view you know it's stuff I might tell a psychiatrist and they'll call me mentally ill but you know this is how I've interpreted some of these strange events that I've experienced and you know by the way the world works in those strange states one can in intuit how the world can work and so you know just talking about my low functional time and my lower states and you know some of the things I've been through and I typed it by text so you know I even told her that I've died many times and I've died many times so other people don't have to or you know I feel a lot of hurt sometimes because you know that way others feel less hurt you know stuff I could read out at some point but it's just sort of an interesting mix of things that are going on so I'm gonna go to my friend's coffee shop for a little bit and then I'll go home and sleep and tomorrow I have to work and you know things to get sorted out and I do want to be ready to leave on a moment's notice in case crap hits the fan man it could hit the fan so yeah but then you know having some sessions of counseling and then maybe having a tennis partner I have another friend that I wanted to play tennis with that hurt had the an injury so that won't be happening so yeah things maybe aren't as bad you know I think conflict a lot of times is just like different worldviews and different paradigms and you know one thing that I'm curious about is part of the reason why I feel like I manifest as lower energy states and like really emotional is because I have to go down to, the, to that level to meet others so I'm in pain in a way because I'm not op operating in the, the more energetic and higher levels so I manifest as this self that's in pain and emotional and self-centered probably and like poor me and my you know first world problem situation but really you know there's another dimension there's another world where things just go so smoothly and beautifully and I think right now I'm sort of in both you know manifesting a tennis partner out of nowhere and then you know talking and trying to resolve conflict a bit but I just wonder you know if I don't know why I'm saying you know but if others who maybe because I want people to know if others who don't operate in those higher energies do they need to change in order to meet that other or maybe they don't need to change maybe it's just an understanding or having a communication level of okay I understand that you operate in a different way doesn't mean somebody else has to operate that way so for example kids who are autistic parents don't need to be become autistic themselves in order to understand that this child has other needs uh, different needs they need a lot of love they need some of the hypersensitivity taken away in terms of too much information sometimes they need a lot of love and unconditional love and care because if an autistic kid you know gets upset and throws a tantrum and if a parent were to punish them they would be like you're bad I'm not talking to you well um, that's not gonna work and it's not going to work with people who their brain also exists in another world it's a world beyond reward and punishment and the world of reward and punishment which is the mainstream wants to like use reward and punishment to get that person to start functioning in terms of reward and punishment but and that's motive motivation is based on reward or punishment to avoid punishment or to move towards some kind of reward but the brain doesn't work that way anymore in people who have gone into altered states. So if others could understand these other ways of functioning and that it could be possible that some people are experiencing more pain and agony in the linear world in order so other people don't have to process that as much. So their function could be somewhat of an as an absorber and maybe 
and like a transmuter of the energy sometimes, maybe those people could be given some regard and, you know, unconditional positive regard, like the principle of wellness recovery action plan facilitator. So, yeah, I could work on that myself, but... I think reading Dr. David Hawkins' book, Healing and Recovery, is helping a little bit because he talks about telling the truth. And I think the way I had that conversation with my mom through text, it felt more truthful to say the truth of my experiences, no matter how weird they are. But I just hope her reading my weird experiences doesn't warp her brain too much. Because that's the thing, I think... A lot of times, we as people who get diagnosed with a mental illness don't necessarily get to a position of strength where we can speak from strength about the truth of our experiences because we're pathologized when we're sharing our experiences at a certain point and they're being listened to as symptoms of a personal mental illness. When one is really wanting to communicate other possibilities but we don't necessarily often get to a place of strength where we can do that. And I kind of just experimented with that with my mom. And it changed the flavor of the conversation from like ex accusing each other to kind of understanding each other. And she says she sort of sees bad things before they happen sometimes. And I told her sometimes I can see who's going to die if I go that way, <laughs> you know. And I don't want that person to die. So... I, you know, go the other way. And then is one, like, messing with fate? And that's why, in a way, at some point, we get punished through going psychotic. But really, we go psychotic to, to resolve certain energies. And we take on the bad energy and go psychotic. So that possibility doesn't unfold. And then it's just like, oh, you had symptoms of an illness. But really, we experience, like somebody we know dying and we're like oh my god no and so we take it on ourselves go crazy because going from one possibility to another is maddening and then you know other people see us as mentally ill when really we are it's sort of like that that show touch that I watched how the dad like does things and connects people so his his autistic son won't feel pain. Well, we're like doing stuff and connecting things in consciousness so other people won't feel pain. Possibly, I don't know. It's something quite mysterious, as life is mysterious. So, you know, even being able to speak in that way, and I used to speak in that way to myself a lot, these like empowering possibilities of what's going on instead of oh it's like this personal mental illness Whoa, that sucks if I realized for real that me going crazy sometimes and losing functionality saved other people's lives I would be fine with it and maybe I could take that perspective a little bit If my body sometimes experiences agony that I need to stay with and transmute, and maybe that helps other people who are in pain, that'd be lovely. And that's what Matt Kahn says when I watch some of his videos and I thought it was a little hokey that he says, when you're brushing your teeth, say to yourself, you're, you're, you're curing hunger all over the world. Well, why can't say one say when I'm experiencing what they call psychosis, I'm healing the world. You know, that would be something along the lines of Matt Kahn's teachings. So, who knows, right? There's so many possibilities, but being able to talk about it in those ways was more powerful. That's one of the things that was coming up in mind. A bit of a struggle when I was on the island was like, man, there's so much I kind of want to tell people, but they don't want to know. And then not saying it is part of what 
goes into like creates the crash like it implodes upon me on myself because I'm not fulfilling my function so then it goes okay fine the energy is going to implode upon you and make you into an a not very well functioning ego if you're not going to be functioning with this information that you've learned and like I said I used to talk to myself a lot but the thing is now I don't really have the space like before I had my place it was noisy but I had a place where I could write notes and then sit down and talk about them I had a little process going and then I was in California I had a bit of a process going but since then I've been not really channeling the insights as much and I've been more so talking about the supplements I'm taking and all that stuff is really reinforcing the self but it's really hard to it's hard to get into a rhythm of talking about the insights when I don't have like a space to do so because you need a notebook right now I'm just sitting in my car holding my phone and I usually just hold my phone now whereas before I like have a little prop up stand and talk about things so maybe it's time to just start saying the truth of my subjective experience a lot more and yeah I said that stuff in my videos but then I got away from it a bit so we'll see because I feel like now I'm in a bit of a space where like yeah I do have some gifts I do I don't know what and it's not really important but it does feel more powerful than being in sort of a sad consciousness so we'll see how it goes